It was the first heat for the first order of Riordan metal. To the men at the tap hole of the furnace, inside the mills, the first break of the liquid metal into the open came as a shocking sensation of the morning. The narrow streak pouring through space had the pure white color of sunlight. Black coils of stream were boiling upwards, streaked with violent red. Fountains of sparks shut in beating spasms, as from broken arteries. The air seemed torn to rags, reflecting a raging flame that was not there. Red blotches whirling and running through space, as if not to be contained within a man-made structure, as if about to consume the columns, the girders, the bridges of cranes overhead. But the liquid metal had no expect of violence. It was a long white. Curve with the texture of satin and the friendly radiance of a smile. It flowed obediently through a spout of clay, with two brittle borders to restrain it. It felt through twenty feet of space, down into a ladle that held two hundred tons. A flow of stars hung above the stream, leaping out of its placid smoothness, looking delicate as lace and innocent as children's sparklers. Only at a closer glance could one notice that the white satin was boiling. Splashes flew out at times and fell to the ground below. They were metal and cooling. While hitting the soil, they burst into flame. Two hundred tons of metal, which was to be harder than steel, running liquid at a temperature of four thousand degrees, had the power to annihilate every wall of the structure and every one of the men who worked by the stream. But every inch of its course, every pound of its pressure, and the content of every molecule within it were controlled and made by a conscious intention that had worked upon it for ten years. 